99. All over. 97. All said and done. 96. 95. And finally. 94. Annihilated. So these works behind me are three one-to-one -one replicas of uh, the standard window types from the very famous Sirius building that's in the rocks in Sydney, known to many Sydney siders. Um, it was designed by the Housing Commission architect Tal Gophers in 1978. It was built to house uh, communities in the rocks that were being displaced by the government's attempt to redevelop the area. And fam the famous green bands of that period in the 60s and 70s were created by the unions to protect heritage um, buildings, uh, green space and communities from being displaced. And it was the first in the world, actually. So when we talk about ecological movements today, um, the unions were very powerful ecological activists because they had the kind of the might of the unions to, to stop development and to interrupt government. So they were much loathed by many people. My dad's an architect, he, he, fought, he fought the unions on a lot of levels, but you know, they're much admired, I think, by lots of people today. So the Sirius building was actually, it was almost um, um, what came out of it. That community went into that building, the government built this building. So it's a br brutalist building, um, common to that period. It's a type of architecture that I've always loved. My dad is an architect. Uh, um, he, you know, was a student of the work of Louis Kahn, you know, who was a sort of truth to materials, brutalist architect. This is, you know, a very good example and actually internationally recognised as a very good example of brutalist architecture. So I had that affection for this type of architecture. It was meant to be white, but they couldn't afford it. So it's, but it's, you know, raw aggregate concrete. And in the building itself, you used to see, I used to see it when I drove from my parents' place across the harbour, you would see it sort of peeking out um, just on, off across the edge of the uh, harbour and it was, you'd see the rooftop and the rooftop gardens of it and you'd see these service ducts are all painted particular colours. They were red and purple and blue and, and yellow, a very particular um, uh, palette and that's the colours you're seeing behind you. So I had a great affection for it. I didn't know much about the building there but years later I sort of found out about it and it came into my mind again because it was under threat a number of years ago, the building, because the government wanted to tear it down and build luxury apartments. So there was a whole contest again, you know, in the rocks about saving first the community, which they couldn't do, and that community was relocated elsewhere, but then to save the building, which is important uh, because the building is a kind of symbol and a memorial for all that kind of activism and, and, and that particular history. There was a friends of Millis Point who were um, fighting the government uh, around um, the future of the Sirius building and they took me to visit the final, the last resident. So the 79, 79 apartments, there was one resident left. Her name was Myra, Myra Dimitriou. She's an old Greek woman and um, very feisty and you couldn't get into the Sirius building at that time. It was all fenced up. So, you know, you had to get someone to give you access. So she was the lone figure in this building and she had in her window SOS, the words SOS, taped in LED that would shine over the rocks at night. And, and I, you know, we met and it was great. I took photos and I thought about it, but for years I didn't really know what to do with it. It was a work that I might do. I've certainly done work about particular forms of architecture that relate to this, like habitat and, and so on, and my father's house and, and what have you. So it was a very familiar project to do, but I didn't quite know how to do it. And what stayed with me was the SOS, this idea of this kind of plea to kind of save the building, but then really it was more about the kind of end. It struck me as a kind of plea for saving all sorts of things or a kind of, you know, marker of an end time. And I mean, we're living in COVID-19 now and it was way before then, but there are so many ends all the time. There were the bushfires and then, you know, we, we think about ecology and capitalism and whatever it is. There are lots of ends, of course, but I did think about that. And my father died actually recently you know, uh, there were a couple of fathers who died. So we had personal, you know, sense of the end as well. So that in a way, the building kind of relates to that experience for me. So what you see behind you are these three one-to-one -one replicas of the windows. Uh, and inside, um, there is a sound um, coming from each window. It flashes with the color. So it's a bit like Howl in 2001. It's this kind of, uh, 
you know, robotic, um, in many ways, kind of voice of the future talking to you. So one Siri is intoning every different term for the end that she can Don't imagine. It. Um, so it's the voice of the future Do. actually talking about having no future. Um, one is um, a machine shutting down. So um, it tries to shut down, but it never can. So that's always kind of on a loop. And the other is um, the doomsday clock, which is 100 seconds to midnight. And it just goes through, it counts down from 100 to zero, 46. then back again, and sort of constantly sort of repeating. So the loop is a very important part of my work with the soundtracks, especially. Um, that the thing sort of begins again, the end begins again. There are always different ends, beginnings of ends, you know, and forever ends. Each window is painted out uh, with white paint behind it. So the, the light is shining through the white paint. And it's, they're not kind of light boxes in that sense. They're, I wanted to make it like a kind of abandoned shop. There's that, you know, when a, a shop becomes a house or, you know, they often paint, it, paint out the window kind of roughly or if it's abandoned or if it's changing hands or so on. So that's what it kind of, each of them look like they've got this kind of cloudy you know, play of light behind them. Eight, up shit seven, three, six, washed up, five, four, waste three, two, one, zero. The end.